Hello and welcome to today's session. We're just going to hang on as all of our attendees join us and we're going to kick off the live stream as well. So I will do our intro in about one minute. Did we have music this time? Carry a little bit of jazz for a winter. <laughs> Where do you see people like your, your guitar first, Dad? I know that's going to be soon. <laughs> I'm surprised that Carrie's humor for all of our attendees. Carrie's had about 12 minutes sleep in the last three days, but she's looking <laughs> remarkable. Whereas the rest of our guests are you're looking all a bit scary. Hey, Magnus. Rose amongst the thorns, yeah. All right, guys. So I'm going to say a good morning and uh, welcome to our webinar on powering your platform performance. Thank you all for joining us today as we delve into the hot topics around enterprise architecture today. We welcome your active participation in today's event. Please do use the Q&A functionality and pose any questions that you'd like answered. We will be discussing these during and after the panel discussion. If you'd like to voice your questions and points directly, please utilize the raise hand function and I'll promote you to the panel so that you can ask our panelists live. This is your session, so let's engage, let's answer your questions. And without further ado, I'm now going to hand over to Daniel Roberts, our host and moderator for today's session. Thank you so much, Kerry, and uh, a formal thank you for our panelists for joining us. We have representatives from SUSE, from IBM, and from Data Centrics, and I'm learning more and more about all organizations. I'm really glad that you've made the time for this discourse. When we consider the tough times faced by businesses on our continent in Africa, IT directors are pummeled by a multitude of challenges. How do we stay ahead of our clients' transformational objectives whilst cutting our carbon footprint and enabling comprehensive security solutions in a work from anywhere on any device network world? Uh, just raise your glass if you don't have a cup of coffee. I'm drinking an amazing Arab Arabic mixture. It's fantastic. <laughs> And we are celebrating No Mask Thursday in South Africa. Yeah. I know for a lot of internationals, that's not a big thing. But for me, I really didn't enjoy wearing face masks the last three months. And to, that speaks to the rate of change we are going through in the world. So this change affects the bedrock of organizations. And that's the architecture and where we go. And we got together a couple of the key people from data centrics. And my first is Graham, who I'm going to introduce you. Graham, as part of the Data Centrics leadership team, you've been living this change on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. What does your average day look like? Hi, Daniel. Thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, the intro. Uh, yeah, um, our customers, uh, I see you on a daily sort of uh, basis. And the activities that we're looking at, is a lot of uh, infrastructure optimization and in implementation projects, some customization of and consolidation on and standardization of the OSs. Okay, mm -hmm. and that leads to improved uh, management of those platforms. And we also look at uh, uh, customizing applications to uh, some of our clients' requirements. So those are some of the things that. Uh, I deal with clients on a regular basis. Stunning. Um, you know, so you are, are, have rolled your sleeves up and you're still in the, in the middle of it. I know you're part of the leadership team and the senior leadership team, but this issue of the technology layer, why does it still play such an important role? Is a piece of tin not simply a piece of tin? Uh, Daniel, uh, a, a lot of people will say tin is tin, okay? Mm -hmm except when uh, there's a competitive advantage, okay, that you gain from a certain technology. So, you know, technology brings that, uh, your speed to market a lot quicker. It gives uh, your clients, well, our clients, the, the, the competitive edge that they need. Okay, and it also brings new routes and ideas to market and these technology changes just speed up that performance. Can you imagine still running on a DOS machine? Oh my word, Wouldn't you're showing your age. I don't even know what DOS <laughs> is, Graham. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So it, I, I, when you consider that 
that the differentiator can be there from an architectural perspective and have real business benefits. Why do you think this partnership of IBM and Linux is of interest to people who are attending this call to me? Why, why is it important in South Africa? Look, uh, um, IBM and, and, and uh, Linux, uh, IBM's been around with data centrics for, for many, many years. And, and Linux has grown significantly in, in probably the same amount of time. Uh, and a lot of people are, are putting Linux in their platform for a number of reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, uh, our strategic relationship with IBM has allowed us to grow this Linux partnership. And uh, we've got uh, uh, almost a, a dedicated force looking at, uh, at Linux for us. Uh, we've recently uh, brought on uh, Quinton uh, Brousseau from my, on, on my team. And he's uh, going to, uh, uh, look after this uh, portfolio. Awesome. Quinton, you are going to be in the hot seat um, very yes. soon. So Quinton is, uh, what do you do at Datacentrics? Quinton, why, why are you on this call? Okay, so the reason I'm actually on this call and why I joined Datacentrics, which is now almost two months ago, is the market has started to show a bit of demand around, you know, getting skill sets around the Linux and more the open source you know, type of technologies running on these pieces of tin, as you call it. Mm. And my driver and, and, and uh, you know, role as a solution specialist for, for data centrics is to actually now go in position with our traditional type of salespeople and customers, or whatever, mm. to actually go and find the value for them out of this, these Linux platforms. Mm. But the one thing that Graham has put there, and I, I wanted to add on to it, is people are definitely more looking at the technology stacks now, except for the competitive edge they need their tech to give them results quickly, right? Mm -hmm. The analyzing of the data that they basically are analyzing or the data to be available for them to analyze is important for them to make decisions that will propel business in the direction they want to propel it. Mm -hmm. So my role at the stage of data centrics is just to basically sit down with our customers and just figure out where can we make a difference and where open source will play a role with them mm -hmm. because whether the guys like it or not, open source is playing a bigger and bigger role, even in the local economy, mm. uh, purely because it's also not interoperable. Mm. Awesome. Thank you. Magnus, um, you, where are you sitting at the moment? It looks stunning there and you're in a short uh, <laughs> uh, sleeve t-shirt. Where are you from? Which organization and why are you here? Thank you. Uh, I actually brought a shirt with a SUSE logo, uh, so it's not a T-shirt. <laughs> so uh, that will be later for today. Uh, I'm Magnus Kjellqvist. I'm based in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, at the moment, I'm uh, on the other side uh, of the bridge to, to Denmark, uh, so I'm in the south of Sweden. That It's a little bit greener down here. Um, I have, I'm working for SUSE. Uh, one of uh, the vendors, the, 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 I would say one of the three uh, major Linux vendor and vendors. And if we look at the SAP, uh, I would say there are only two. That's we and our competitor, Red Hat. Uh, you can't mention the competitor on no, our... <laughs> Come on. The next, next I'm going to have to drop an IBM competitor <laughs> just know. to keep up with you. <laughs> yeah, open, open world, Daniel. Yeah. In, in the open source world, we're all friends. <laughs> yes, exactly. I agree. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, Magnus, um, yeah. you know, we, we are talking about um, open source on IBM. To me, that almost seems like an oxymoron. And um, I'm looking forward to diving into it further. But let me tell you what, or, or let me ask you, from your perspective of a European um, specification, you guys are, are in boots and all in architectural design. We've got hybrid strategies, which are, are accepted from all sides. We've got on-prem, we've got cloud, we've got public data centers. Is there a space for open source, or are we, or are we, are your markets declining at the moment? No, uh, on the contrary, there, there, as a, our market for open source in general is really growing. Uh, I, I mean, if, it, if I if I then address uh, what we're doing together with IBM on the power machine, 
I, I would say that uh, open source and especially Linux is a very, very good fit. For especially for for the power machine because as a, if you if you want to scale out, if you uh, want to have the most power ma powerful machine and addressing what this webinar is, I mean the machine is built for SAP HANA. It's perfect for it. Uh, I, I I let IBM uh, update you on on the current figures how much of of SAP HANA is running of the total 100% of the machine later, mm. but I I can assure you it, it's a huge amount and we are still growing with it. Did, did I, I answer correctly? You did, you did. There is, there is, a, good, there is a good space there. Wait, hold on, Quintlet. Hold Sorry. on for me. Magnus, <laughs> um, you did answer and I'm quite interested because Yassel has been nodding a lot there. So Yassel, I am going to introduce you right now. Quinton just wanted to dive in and, and add something. Yeah, just for, you know, Yassel can attest to this. Although you said uh, IBM and open source are, uh, you know, oxymoron. Actually, IBM are one of the biggest contributors towards a multitude of open source projects out there. Uh, it it is something that IBM has been uh, doing for years. So well, it should not shock people, actually. You just opened the door for me to ask Yassel. Yassel Akgun, where is yeah. that from? That's an interesting surname. It is an interesting one, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for inviting and that's, that's in this lovely discussion, guys. I mean, this is Yassel Akgun. I'm based in Dubai. I am responsible for power technical centers across Middle East and Africa. Okay. And I have been in Joburg in three weeks ago. It was a lovely boot camp with our business partners, and I'm willing to come again, uh, hopefully with the Power 10 scale-out announcement, which will be late July, and hope to meet you in person, number one. Awesome. Number two, Linux and open source. Uh, dears, they are uh, indis indispensable, I have to say that. It is clear. That's why, as my friends, their friends mentioned, IBM and open source, they're like, you know, stakeholders, I would say. And Linux, I do remember power systems uh, do support Linux uh, distributions for two decades, maybe. Wow. I do remember late 90s or early 20, 2000, yeah, 2001, 2002. I do remember with Regatta Power Tour, Power, power 4 uh, generation, Linux used to be supported. It's still support. So mm -hmm. it's more than 20 years history. Power systems, IBM, and Linux, and open sub, open source support. So, as I said, it's dispensable. We should get ready for that if we haven't yet. Okay. Not Thanks. just OS. Yes, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead, please. That's please. great. What do you do at IBM, yourself? Okay, I'm 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 leading power technical sellers across Middle East and Africa, as I said, and. Yeah. When we think about power, it's not just a server. I have to mention that it's a full solution for okay. your for your business. Not only not, not only for business business critical, but also for as I said for open source and for Linux distributions. Okay, and it's clear it's clear being being able to reconfigure, being able to modernize, being able to adapt to the changing demands, especially during this, this pandemic, is a key requirement for, for today's systems infrastructure, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to respond faster to business demands. We need to protect data from core to cloud. Okay. And we have to streamline insights and automation, which is okay. crucial. Okay. Awesome, Yasel, that's very cool. Now we've got a grounding for who's on the call with us. There are 28 different people and a whole bunch um, streaming on, on LinkedIn who we also want to get to do some work. So Carrie is going to pop a poll onto the chat and we're going to ask our attendees just to answer the questions that have come up. There's no prize for you, unfortunately, no prize, um, except we will discuss what comes through. So if you are, are on, the, on the Zoom call, you should have the poll in front of you. The questions are fairly self-explanatory, so even I can understand them. 
I can see that we've got one answer coming through. And the questions are operational enterprise performance is hampered by complex architecture and security concerns. Where my enterprise workloads reside is less of a concern now than it was two years ago. The majority of my enterprise workloads live on-prem, local data center, cloud hyperscaler or other, and operational effectiveness is being impacted by staff movement and the war for talent. Now that war for talent is a very interesting one. Um, we see uh, a lot coming out of Europe and America on the, um, the great resignation. And from an Africa perspective, we are seeing the great migration Graham, are you seeing that people are, are coming to you simply because their IT teams can't keep up? We're losing the staff or definitely. is that not a driver? No, it's definitely a, a driver. Uh, clients are uh, getting hold of us on a regular basis and saying their environment is, is struggling due to lack of, of, of talent. They are struggling to find uh, resources. And uh, yeah, uh, ourselves uh, included um, are always on the lookout for, for good resources because we just have uh, the requirements from our clients to assist them. So Awesome. Yes. So if you're in South Africa, I know Datacentrix has got amazing staff benefits. Put your CV in. Come on, Graham's waiting. <laughs> um, Quinton, you moved across there. Uh, um, are you seeing that customers are, are struggling with, with dealing with uh, these gaps in their, in their IT teams and the skill sets? Or am I yes, making I'm up something? You're not really making up something. That's a big challenge. Let's call it for if we're looking local markets, the biggest, biggest challenge for us is at this stage is to have sufficient skills. Right. Sure. And the issue most of the customers face is, you know, they do invest in these skills and, you know, you drive a, a, a person to become an administrator or an engineer, or whatever the case is. And, you know, five, 10 years down the line, you know, like you said, now we're into a talent war where the person moves, you know, from, one company to another. And I think the drive from us and Graham and I actually had a nice chat about it this morning. I said to him, uh, I feel passionate about wanting to teach more people and get more people to actually use these, you know, mm -hmm. online uh, type of courses that companies like SUSE and that give for free to their partners and that to get them more skilled up and, uh, you know, try and point them out into a different type of career if needed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, where people see a challenge, I see an opportunity at this stage for a lot of, uh, you know, people from a grassroots level to actually become more IT savvy, if we can put it that way, and, and, and actually to provide to their families. Mm. Mm. Just to, you know, to, to add to that, sorry, uh, Daniel. Go, Grant. Um, we have a very strong SMME uh, program as well that uh, we work with SMMEs to, to grow that uh, side of uh, the business as well for skills and that for our clients. That's interesting. I, Magnus, um, I, I, have you had a, a look at anything standing out of the first question for you, which is an overwhelming sense? 88% of, of our attendees are saying operational performance is hampered by complex architecture and security um, concerns. Is this, how does Power and yourself help to minimize this complexity what are you doing or are you sorry adding to the complexity <laughs> uh well uh, as a as i said i said before uh susa linux and the power machine is the absolute best fit and our secure our, our secure security solution our ha uh, availability availability extension our live patching uh, that is, uh, all of that is bundled in our SAP HANA solution. So, uh, yes. So you're saying that because it's all bundled, it gets ready to rock and roll a lot quicker and it doesn't require that human intervention. That's what I understood. I'm hoping that's what you were saying. Exactly, that is what, what I was saying. And the ease of installation, uh, um, Etc. Uh, the 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 automated process. Uh, if you if you compare to to in, to the other vendors in the environment we are working in working on, uh, we we have a 
actually a longer experience and uh, especially on the power machine we have been since mm. 2017 as the first linux and were unique for two years that means that uh, we we have we have had a longer time to mm. to develop uh, on the machine and enhance uh, for for example security and and the, the extensions i mentioned mm. Okay. Uh, Yasal, I'm coming to you because we've got a tough question. You were just in Johannesburg. You understand the state of where we are. We've got potholes and low money. So um, Natasha has asked, is this, uh, is this at, at all applicable to the SMME market? And then maybe we can get Quinton from Data Centrics to answer it. So first from, from the power and, and, and the open source layer that we've got. And then secondly, we'll talk just around the, the hosting of this and looking after it. Go yourself. Okay, so definitely. So we have enterprise solutions and we have also mid-range and scale-out solutions really yield amazing results when we consider flexibility, resiliency, performance, and competitive cost, which is super important for our customers. So why power systems, as my friend mentioned, especially for SAP HANA? Mm. Um, I, I, I have to say, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server is the number one operating system, one number one solution for SAP HANA workloads on any infrastructure. And why power, especially for small and medium uh, industry and the market? Number one, we had they they have to be. We have to help them to get more flexible by the help of superior virtualization, power VC, and and with the with the help of management features to afford flexibility and, and maximum utilization. We don't have luxury to keep the resources idle. We have to utilize them. So number one. Number two, definitely the resiliency. So REST features to support mission critical SAP applications on SUSE. So mm. should be up and running 724 uh, and to get ready for any unplanned stuff as well. Mm. The performance, number three, which is very important as well. The highest throughput per core and core to memory bandwidth, especially for SAP HANA with SUSE Linux Enterprise to deliver faster business results mm. up to two times better than, I have to say, Intel-based alternatives. Last but not least, mm. competitive cost. So flexibility, performance, Rust features equals better total cost of ownership. This is crucial for our customers, for us. That's why Power with the social Linux Enterprise, the best combination, especially for SAP HANA. Awesome. Quentin, I'm going to ask you a tough question on that. Um, and I'm, we are talking about small to medium organizations. Do they have a space at data centrics? And does this discussion come into it? Or do they, yeah. Do, hey, let's, let's, let's simplify it. So yes. The majority of uh, opportunities and discussions I've had thus far are not your with, not with your traditional bigger enterprises, be that in your financial or telco, whatever sector, okay. right? Um, so there's definitely a space for this uh, within your SME or SMEs, or whatever you want to call the smaller companies, right? And again, the open source side of it, and Yassal has actually covered it beautifully, right? The, open, the idea behind the Linux is it's it's a more agile type of uh, solution that you put there for you guys. So they can tailor it to the needs of their business. And I mean, whether it's a big enterprise or it's a, you know, a small SMME, the one thing that they're all looking at at this stage is to actually just get results out of the data that they are, or out of this whole t technology stack that they've put down there to understand the data and go, I need to move a little bit left or three degrees to the right if I can yeah. use that type of thing you know, just to make my business a bit more uh, effective or to be more competitive yeah. against my competitors. Um, so in terms so of maybe, my, it, mm. maybe, the, maybe the question I should be asking you is, actually, what are the SMMEs or any data centrics customer trying to solve by using this as a foundational layer power with um, 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 open source on top of it as part of their enterprise architecture? What is the business problem we're trying to solve here? So I'm going to, um, it's pure and simple from my point of view, right? Yeah. And I'm sure the guys from IBM and uh, Susan can add to it. My perspective is majority of the guys at this stage are looking to standardize 
or have a standard operating environment, be it on-prem or in the cloud or wherever they wanted to, to take it, right? Okay. Probably most enterprises, and maybe this was two, three, four years ago, is you had a multitude of, and let's keep it to a simple layer, like the OS layer, a multitude of different OSs running within an enterprise, right? And now with people starting to tell us that they want to move towards the cloud, you know, everybody's looking for something standardized because if you run it in your on your premise on this side, you know, and you want to move your workload or your information or whatever towards the cloud or in a hyper cloud type of model, if you don't have the same type of environment on the one side, how do you expect to get the same results going into the cloud? So from my okay. perspective, it's a standard operating environment. Okay. 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 I like that. That I get to it. And that's uh, um, uh, um, leading into one of the, I think we, we're on a 50-50 here, is it asked in the, the, the second question was, where it does it matter where your data is stored? where my enterprise workloads reside is less of a concern now than it was two years ago. And it's 56 false. They're saying it, it does matter where it resides. And 44% of our attendees are saying it really doesn't matter to me, which talks then that people want choice about where they want to store it. Um, Magnus, are you saying, seeing the same thing from a European perspective? Is this a common uh, where, where depending CIO strategy to architect strategy, People just want choice. And how do you f facilitate that? I, I can confirm that people want choice. And uh, what, what we have seen that that's been a ride, I mean, um, moving to the cloud, hybrid solution, getting back to on-prem solutions and so on. I, I would say that what we are seeing somewhat might be uh, um, during the pandemic, uh, I, I would say that, a lot of our customers are actually moving somewhat out from the cloud, going back to on-prem solutions. But uh, sure. of, of course, the, the, there is a hybrid model. And, and uh, if, if, if I may say something, uh, that there are very simple solutions uh, for an end customer to make that choice mm. because there are, there are features like bring your own subscriptions with you to the cloud, move them back to on-prem. Wow, you, you know, you, you've Ooh. spoken to where do my enterprise workload, uh, workloads live? And what is that 50, 63% of people are saying on-prem or the local data center? That's where data centrics plays. So you guys have been having a bumper month, having a bumper quarter, Graham. <laughs> Does that mean that uh, you're selling a lot of these uh, power, uh, power solutions and and what is it speaking to? What is driving there? Is it as simple as what Quentin's saying? People want an uncomplicated architecture where they can focus on the business. I, I do think so. Um, we are seeing a number of clients talking to us around uh, the power. And, and obviously, uh, from your sales point of view, the new power is being launched as well. So, okay. uh, yes. So Kirsten asked a, a, a question, which I'm going to pose to Graham and Quinton, not to you, Sal and Magnus, I'm going to come to you now. Kirsten has said, how do you know whether digital transformation is working at your organization? I'm going to turn that question to you, Quinton, and say, how do you enable digital transformation at your customer through data centrics? I think we need to look at it a bit more broader, you know, digital transformation, see success there, but the success yeah. side of it is the culture change within the organization as well, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, to be digitally or saying we're digitally transforming is, is there a culture change? Are people actually focusing that the application is actually getting more and more important? Are we talking to, uh, you know, the infrastructure side to say we need the standardized environment so that we can create these cloud native applications that we want to push out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not entirely sure how you, and again, it's difficult to answer. I'm not entirely sure how you gauge if you are successful. The challenge that most companies face, including ourselves when we talk to people, is it, it does take a culture change as well in that sense. Okay. Okay. Um, and the lady asked the question, which kind of adds on to Kirsten's, and I don't think you answered my question, yeah, okay. but we'll get back to that. And the lady says, how do we determine which architecture will lead us to 
and I'm inverted commas, a future-proof architecture. Yesel, why is this important for us now, this future-proof concept when we are thinking about data centrics? I mean, surely... We shouldn't care about the actually. We have to think in, in, in different dimensions as well. Number one, as you mentioned, while we're trying to respond to the demands as, as fast as possible and keep the data secure with zero trust and make sure it's secure and, and refined properly and be more agile and, and flexible and automated as much as possible. And while considering all these TCO and TCA, we get ready for the, the, the right the architectural and infrastructure solution. Across MIA, globally as well, mm. our customers, they need a solution which will help them to yield more profit, more um, successful and help their clients. So that's why, especially the solution that we are working with our clients nowadays is the real, real private cloud solution. What does it mean? So we would like to give the luxury. We would like to give the benefit of, of real private cloud. So you will get the infrastructure with the resources and you will only pay as you use. Could be prepaid or postpaid. What does it mean? You have the resources of the servers, Susan enterprise operating systems, even the virtualization on the server and on the resources in a pool. And only you pay as you use with the consumption, okay. which is the unique. <laughs> which is unique. That's okay. why we care about all these important, you know, pillars, considering data, responding, you know, fast, considering the trust and the automation. But the TCO and the TCA, OPEX and CAPEX models should be considered and should be worked precisely with our customers, which, which yields our power private cloud solution. So finance and IT should be part of these discussions early on in order to build a good, good way forward. Um, I, and we should be talking to the, the data centrics um, account managers here to, to make a comprehensive business case. We're still in the, in the age of business cases in order to get these things through, it's just OPEX or CAPEX. Who's the main beneficiary of this technology, Magnus? If it means an uncomplicated um, world, is that not just a data centrics that's getting better? Does it make more uh, support more simple? Does it do anything for the end customer uh, um, using SUSE with, with power? Um, absolutely. Uh, I mean, for, for, for the end customer, first of all, as mentioned before, it, it, is, it is the bundled solution instead of a lot of uh, features that, that are picked together. Uh, I can also say that uh, another benefit for the customer is that we can uh, provide sub-capacity pricing. So you, you, you just use the machine uh, for, for what you need it for, and you can, on the other X percent, put other workloads in. I mean, that's a, that's a very, very good benefit when it comes to, to reducing the cost for the customer. And it, it's, uh, uh, I'm not gonna explain it here because it, it's a, uh, I would say uh, it's an easy solution, but how you count it is basically per socket, but you, there, there is a, a formula behind it. Okay. And does this help from an integration strategy perspective, if we've got the two of you working so strongly together, does that, I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, going from point to point into containers, into um, um, all sorts of new integration methods. Where, where do you see this playing a role, Magnus or Yassel? Let, maybe, Yassel, would you answer that one? Because it, it comes more on your side with the technology. Mm. Network. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. But, but I would like to underline one important point as well. We have right now, more than 4,000 clients running their SAP HANA on power solutions. And they are, and the, the ratio is about 95% from operating system perspective, which is dominated by SUSE Linux Enterprise. That's a message. So our clients rely on SUSE. They are running their SAP HANA on, on 
as SLS, Social Linux Enterprise Server, on power systems. And we're talking about 4,000, 4, more than 4,000 customers. And why? The question is why behind that. So it, it's, so it, we have been working with SAP very closely with SUSE in mid-2015. We're talking about last seven years experience. And from generation power seven to power 10, last tricks, last, last two generations, it's proven that this couple, power and SUSE Linux Enterprise, the right solution, especially for ERP solutions, especially for HANA. Okay. And, you know, it's a lesson learned and, and customer experience, public references, success stories, they're over there. That's why our customers, they're also talking to each other because they're, you know, they're, they're also competing in different industries. They would like to get the best benefit, best solution for their specific industry, for their specific goals. And together, IBM and, and SUSE, we are trying to add a value on top of it. While they're trying to reach their goals, we're working together side by side. And especially with SUSE, it's going to be a little bit technical, but especially SUSE Enterprise version 15 with Server Spec 3, it's amazing from automation perspective, from deployment perspective, from, from HR perspective. So a perfect combination, not only from technical perspective, but also from financially, as Magnus mentioned, mm. uh, the right solutions over there, for, not only for enterprise, for small and medium business as well. Can okay. I, and thanks, can, can I, would it be okay that I add one thing very quickly here? That's why you, yeah. Thanks, Cecil, for, for jumping in on my question there. But as an SAP, for, for SUSE and, and uh, as well IBM, SAP for, for SUSE is an innovation partner and a customer. That means that uh, HANA is developed on SUSE as, as the operative system and the platform. Uh, SAP is also a customer of SUSE. So their whole HANA and, uh, environment, their own environment is running on SUSE. So the <laughs> multiple reason. And, uh, sorry for jumping in. No, that's why you're on this call, um, which leads me into the next discussion. Uh, um, uh, I'm going to throw it out there. I think, Magnus, you'll take that. What are the hot topics around enterprise architecture today? Uh, asking, I'm still. Yes, still yes. Okay, great. Thank Go you. to Scandinavia, <laughs> man. Come on, <laughs> Scandinavia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the hot topics. Uh, I mean, for, first of all, the, the the most the hottest topic in this call for us that is Power Ten. We are really waiting for Power Ten. Mid July, I, I think Yasil will confirm when when uh, this will come, and you will see a lot of, of new good things in it. The second topic, and now I will address it in, in, in general terms, that is Kubernetes, of course. Everybody's talking about containers, our launcher solution for, for managing containers, and as well as, an, uh, as a security solution, what mm -hmm. is called Noi Vector. Mm -hmm. So my three hot topics, uh, Power 10, Rauncher, Noi Vector. Okay. And why is it so important for you? I mean, yes, Al, you're welcome to dive in. Quentin, you're welcome to dive in as well. I'd love to hear your opinion on what architects are struggling with and what are we talking around? What are we chewing on? What's the next six months that where we're going? Who's that? Is that yes, Al? Come off mute, man. I will. I, I do. I mean, I, I lost the connection for a couple of things. So power generations. Dear team, I mean, our dear, dear attendees. Our generation our, from a South African perspective is not an architectural <laughs> discussion, no, okay? No, no, That is just <laughs> why, why should we live Why with? power 10 is important to us? Because it increases not only per, per core performance over pre generations, but, but also the scale out and mid range, as my friend mentioned, will be available in July, which means in a couple of weeks time. So we have been waiting for this for almost four years. It's bringing, especially from SUSE Linux Enterprise and SAP HANA perspective, it's bringing mm. a lot of you know, benefits. Number one, you know, as I said, we don't have the luxury to keep the resources in, in South Africa idle for any client, for any partner. It should be utilized. So per core performance from SAP published benchmarks, it's unbelievable. Number two, bandwidth of memory, 
especially for, I'm specifically underlining SAP HANA here as well, because who said Linux Enterprise and Power, best solution for SAP HANA with power 10 scale out and mid range. Bandwidth is unbelievable. Up to eight terabyte of memory for a scale out server with doubling the memory bandwidth because okay. it's running in memory. We need- So we can watch more movies quicker. It is. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. In your seatbelt. Come on Fantastic. yourself. Talk, <laughs> talk to me about what architects are, are keeping them at, uh, awake at night. We need less of these things. I, I've got a very interesting comment in the chat, which I'm bringing to you now, yourself. Yes, tell me. Quentin, what, what, is, what is keeping, what's on your whiteboard from an architectural perspective? Actually, the cyber's backness at this stage, there's definitely a lot of movement around containerization of applications. Okay. Um, the so that whole integration web, that whole complexity of getting 20 of our operational systems optimized, talking to one another is still, I mean, we've been doing this for years now. I believe it's still a discussion. I think it's becoming probably more important because of all of these I mean, the new business or the new enterprise at this stage is definitely looking at ways of putting out their applications, their online applications or whatever mm. it is to their customers quicker and, mm. you know, faster and working, you know, perfectly and analyzing what they're getting from it. And, mm. you know, because people were pushing that way, um, there was probably a period and you've had these talks maybe three, four years ago where people said, uh, no, I'm not going to use bad language, but they said, listen, my developers are all doing, you know, their own thing. And I've got this problem where they're just basically mm -hmm. creating their own OS quickly on there. And then they so develop it and it's not running in the environment. Yeah. Right. And uh, slowly but surely, because this thing is happening, now we have to drag the discussion back to, okay, but guys, then, you know, we need to find a way that we can give the developers the platform. Mm. the ways to do it so that the operations guy that sits on one side doesn't have to go and worry about you know we're probably mm. going to discuss but i saw somebody mentioning something about security uh, that's my question that that's <laughs> so this is one for yourself come on we've got it in the in the comments <laughs> guys use the questions please so i can see it but i noticed security seems to be one of the bottlenecks concerning operational requirements and sometimes development i wouldn't say sometimes always how are you finding adoption of sec dev ops um, where there are some open source binaries where they historically known to be insecure? Yesel, how can you be saying that Magnus should be invited to the party if we know that they're bringing um, potential security risks into the, into the mix? But, but we, 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 we have to consider a couple of things, my friend. Number one, as, as you mentioned, um, zero trust is, is a long-term project, number one, but you cannot order it out of a box. So it's not a single product or solution, it's not. And understanding and, and controlling uh, how users, processors, devices engage with the data is the fundamental purpose of, I would say, zero trust. So multiple data points are required to, to paint and, and, and accurate picture of the activity on the network, evaluation its legitimacy, and, and prevent a threat actors, mm. literally, movement. So mm. mining user and device data with security relevant information, such as location, you know, time, you know, logged behavior, just name it, can, can be used by the system to allow or deny access to specific assets. And the decision is clear. Decision is locked of user of using feature suspicious activity in other things. And this, this process applies to every individual access because to a sensitive you know, resource. The good news is that the transition can be incremental. There's no problem. You're saying there's no problem with magnets around the table. <laughs> no, no. So we definitely, we, <laughs> definitely so not. One, well, we're, I'm going to get to Magnus. I can see the Viking coming <laughs> out of him. I can see the Viking. So we have to we have to make sure it's security is not just a firewall. Security is not just you know uh, a, a checkpoint you know thing. No, it's it starts with the infrastructure as well from architectural level from the the memory encryption from the 
you know, from CP level as well as from the OS level. So it starts from not just one product, not just one item. It's from end to end. We have to, we have to know that. Awesome. Awesome. Magnus, are you the breach? Are you the weakest link that we're coming? <laughs> Come on, Magnus. If data, <laughs> if, uh, if data Centrics is pushing this and saying <laughs> to customers, this is a brilliant place to um, run your SAP environment. Is Magnus the weak link in the in the thing here? Is that a true statement that came through? Uh, wrong statement. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're, I'm we're, so glad there's no light on you. You've got the Viking <laughs> look. <here. laughs> I, I, I would still say no, no, no. Uh, we, as a, together with IBM Power Systems and SAP. I mean, it, it's the bundle that is the strongest link of our, us, uh, us three vendors to be working together with the most powerful machine, the most secure Linux, uh, with, with the most included features, such as security, such as, I mean, you could, could also mention that live patching is included. There are security issues when you're gonna patch your system, you're gonna close it down, reboot, etc. right? Uh, which, which also can 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 uh, uh, give you a very very high cost if this is not run the proper way. So no, I I I, I still say it's the perfect solution, and therefore ninety four percent of all the uh, Hana customers on IBM Power are on SUSE. So uh, we've spoken a lot about SAP. You do obviously run other applications on there, hey? or is, is that the majority that would suit this environment? Graham? I, uh, look, I think from a, a power point of view, uh, the, it's a very strong uh, message that uh, IBM is driving with SUS. Uh, yes, there are lots of other applications and that that uh, run extremely well on the power and SUS platform. Okay. So, uh, so we're not exclusive. We're not only going absolutely to Absolutely not. All right. Uh, I think just, Daniel, just to add to Graham there, uh, yeah. the, the, the SAP use case, right, yeah. or business case that we're using is just a very powerful use case to show the capabilities of SLES on power, right? Because SAP databases and information that people want to get or whatever are extensive. And you know, it's a good use case to show you that, you know, SLES on power actually works well. Well, yeah. Quentin, we've, we've had a discussion here regarding the great migration. And um, we've got customers that are saying, uh, like, dude, why? SAP is going to put it out again. Yes, Sal, is that what you're saying from uh, that people are, are still not out of the starting blocks? And is this a good time to come and chat to you if they want to fast track their migration? What would it benefit them considering migrating on power? We, with we it's an amazing, perfect time. So when we, yes, we all talk about SAP HANA right now, but as you mentioned, especially if you talk about power and if you talk about SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, SAP HANA is the right discussion point. So, so it needs a migration from SAP ECC to SAP HANA. At the end of the day, SAP HANA is a database solution for ERP solutions, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it needs migration, it needs assistance, it needs assessment, it needs, you know, it needs work, definitely. So we together, data centric with SUSE teams and IBM lab services and consulting teams, we are ready to help you to assess your environment when the time comes for you to move to and migrate to SAP HANA. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. till 2027, you're good to go with the SAP ECC traditional one, but it's obviously already announced by SAP itself that we have five years. It's sooner the better. Let's work yeah. together. Let's assess your environment and keep in mind, Power 10 scale out will help you to protect your data in memory with transparent yeah. memory encryption and your database is running in memory. Awesome. We're ready to help you. Yep. Awesome. Yes, Al, that's a, a great wrap up for you as we're coming up to the hour. I'm going to ask you just to think about the questions I'm going to ask the team. I'll come back to you now. Magnus, for joining us all the way from um, um, the, your faraway land where it's not getting dark at the moment <laughs> and it's summer, we are very jealous. If you had to give someone advice when they're considering, their, considering a modernization of their architecture, 
and they are thinking of of diving further into open source and they're thinking of of looking at these this new power environment what advice on a checklist would you give them of of three to five points that you would say is important for them to look at as a always the cost right the, the, the cost is always going to be an important factor then i would say uh, second and let me just think for it the, 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 well. then then we're talking about the actual migration um, of course you need skilled people but you have a product out there ibm power the hardware you have uh, our SUSE, and and actually it installs itself uh, there is a lot of complexity when you want to migrate, but our system installs itself with a wizard, with a solution around it. You also want visibility and control of what you're doing. And I would say that console, as a, a consolidated view of activities and performance. Mm -hmm. We've already five. Uh, we already mentioned security. There is availability. Uh, is there a management tool? Yes, there is a management tool called SUSE Manager. Uh, it's not integrated, it's an add-on, but it's a very, very good management tool to, that fits into the TCO the, mm -hmm. that I talked about, because you're, you're in control of patching, you're in control of where you are, you might have systems uh, or licenses or subscriptions that starts and ends at different dates. If you have multiple of those, that's very, very tough to, to manage. Awesome. Uh, that's, my, that's my simple answer. Maybe it became seven. Sorry about that, Dan. <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect. Magnus, thank you for being so open to be on this call and for sharing your knowledge. The prep sessions were amazing with you as well. Um, it is a pity you're a long way away, or else I'd give you a bottle of wine. Quentin, um, <laughs> as the newest kid on the block from a data centrics perspective, um, if you had to um, say to a customer, if you had to say a, 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 a pitch, to a customer in the centrics that they won't get somewhere else. Right. So let's see. Might be a 10 second or a 20 second one. Um, in the two months I've been here thus far, the one thing is data centrics are good as a, an infrastructure partner. And uh, data centrics has the skills in house. And I've met a lot of the people that's keeping. Mm you know, other customers' environments alive and making sure that their business are, businesses are on and running profitably. And we've got a track record of many, many, many years. Um, from a personal perspective, I would not have joined a company such as Data Centrics if I didn't think that they have got, the, you know, what it takes for us to build out a new type of vision from a Linux perspective. Brilliant answer. Thank you, Quentin. And you know, 56% of our respondents say that operational effectiveness is being impacted by staff movement and the war on talent. And that talks to having a partner like Data Centrix with Gravitas and with size. Graham, um, my final wrap from you, what's your focus for the next six months from a Data Centrix perspective and, and where are you taking this organization? So I think uh, uh, from our point of view, uh, Obviously, our focus is to grow our, um, our, si our side in the market, all right? Mm. Uh, Data Centrics was not previously that well known as a Linux partner. Uh, that is the focus of what we are changing, that we are there to help our customers. Uh, Linux is, is, is everywhere, whether you like mm. it or not. Mm. Every single client has some kind of Linux in their environment. Obviously, awesome. combined with our IBM partnership, that is what we're looking to drive into the market today. Awesome. That's the next six months, which speaks then to Yassel as your wrap up here. Yassel, what would change in the IT team if they rolled out the solution? How would they change their operational um, to take advantage of it? And why would you say it's worthwhile? Uh, before you answer that, before I forget, Graham, where do people learn more? Is Data Centrics website? Can they just go into datacentrics.com? Yeah. .co.za. .co.za. Go and have a look. Yassel, what would change yeah. in the IT team by using this, um, uh, this power environment with SUSE on top? But I, I have to say, I love the discussion. It's, but in, in a nutshell, I would say three important things. Number one, modernization. Not only of the infrastructure of the architecture, as well as from 
Kubernetes perspective and microprocessor perspective, you have to get ready for it. You may have the best solution, best software, but if you don't have the right infrastructure with the right architecture, it will not pay off. Number two, real flexibility, real flexibility. I'm not saying only public or private cloud. You have to have the environment that you can really utilize and consume properly. Flexibility means Linux. Flexibility means open source, which will run on power systems better than others. I have to say that. It's it, indispensable. Linux and open source. Get ready for it. And number three, awesome. number three, last one. About mm. TCO, TCA, yes, financial is important, but you have to do it with the right teams. Data-centered teams, with IBM teams, with SUSE teams. You have to team, you know, you have to work with the team who knows their stuff, right SMEs. Mm. That's the only way to, to be successful. Awesome. I love Excellent. that summary. I love what we've, we've said there. And, uh, Magnus, Quinton, Graham, yourself, it's been lovely to have a little bit of your time you know, from a poll perspective, people are saying that they don't know whether or not to store stuff in cloud, on-prem, in country, out of country. What this partnership is giving them is choice. And they're giving them choice whether you're on an SAP backbone or whether you're on, uh, on a different ERP environment. You can use this partnership to fast scale your digital transformation. Great chat. Thank you very much, gentlemen Thanks, and lady who is back. I hope you have a warm day. I'm going to hand it straight to Kerry and give you a minute to wrap. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Dan, and thanks to our panelists. What a great conversation. So I wanted to say thank you to all of our attendees for joining today. I do hope that you found today's session insightful and that we answered some of your questions. Uh, please always feel free to reach out to me. I like to know what you think of our sessions and how we can improve to assist you on your journey. We will be doing a webinar report back, which will be published online. We'll make this um, a video available so you can share it with your team. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, at the next one. Excellent. Thank you, Kerry. Cheers, Thanks, Kerry. And Daniel, thank you very Everyone. much for driving the show. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Daniel. Have a good day. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye.